Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference from the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2016 here in Davos, if the subtle branding in the back hasn't given it away yet. Um, the press conference you're joining here in the room and also on the live stream is, uh, is looking at the dark side of the fourth industrial revolution, if you will, the theme of this meeting. So the question we're, we're trying to answer here today with this, with this wonderful panel is, how can we confront cybercrime? And um, without further ado, uh, let me introduce our wonderful panel to you today. We're joined by my immediate left, uh, by my colleague Jean-Luc Vey, who's a, managing, uh, who's a member of the managing board of the World Economic Forum and he's heading our work in, in that particular field. In his previous life, he used to be leading the federal police of Switzerland um, and has a distinguished career in the field of intelligence as well. Right in the center of our panel, and we're particularly pleased to welcome here today, is uh, Loretta Lynch, the US uh, Attorney General, um, to talk about the subject here today. Uh, to her left, uh, Jürgen Stock, who is uh, the uh, um, Secretary General of the International Criminal Police Organization, or Interpol, uh, as you might know it. And uh, all the way down uh, the panel, but last but definitely not least, Eugene Kaspersky, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of uh, Kaspersky Lab. Um, thank you to all uh, very much for being here. And Attorney General, without wasting uh, the time, uh, over to you, please. All right, thank you so much. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Thank you all for being here this afternoon as well. It's truly a pleasure to be here in Switzerland at Davos at the World Economic Forum. Uh, we have had a wonderful day with some exciting and, and truly fascinating discussions about the ways that global leaders can continue to work together to fight cybercrime. These have been vitally important discussions, and I thank the World Economic Forum for convening them, and I thank my colleagues in advance for continuing them, because that is indeed our plan and our goal as we leave this event today. Uh, as the Attorney General of the United States, the safety of our information networks and online systems is one of my top priorities. It is vital that industry and government continue to collaborate on this issue, perhaps more so than in any other area in which we have enforcement priorities. Because private industry is so deeply affected by cybercrime, also private industry has the cutting edge technology that's useful to both government and industry, and not only in identifying the threats, but in predicting them and preventing them again. It's absolute, absolutely critical that we reach beyond our shores to develop a global approach to this threat, which knows no borders. Now, today we talked a lot about the World Economic Forum's recommendations for using the public-private partnerships to address cybercrime, and I want to commend Jean-Luc Vez and his team uh, for their forward-looking efforts to develop those recommendations. And I'm pleased to say that the Department of Justice is already taking steps that advance these recommendations in a variety of ways. We are promoting partnerships with the public and the private sector. In December of 2014, the Department of Justice created a cybersecurity unit dedicated to supporting partnerships both within government and between private entities and law enforcement. And the goal is to help the potential targets of cyber attacks to prevent data breaches and to provide assistance and support when these incidents do occur. The cybersecurity unit and other outreach efforts at the department and the FBI have already increased collaboration and mutual understanding, and I'm confident that they will continue to produce results. We are also working on establishing and enhancing our already existing platforms for cooperation, the literal means by which we share information. From the FBI's National Cyber Investigative Joint Task Force to the National Cyber <coughs> Forensics and Training Alliance, we're finding ways to unite law enforcement, private parties, and leading scholars around our common goals. We have also dispatched FBI cyber experts to work with their counterparts in cybercrime centers around the world, including Interpol's new global complex for innovation in Singapore. And also, just this month, we assigned one of our prosecutors to Eurojust in The Hague to enhance our collaboration with the European Cybercrime Center, or EC3, at Europol. The goal of all of this is to get to a point where we have real-time cooperation and sharing of information about cyber attacks, cyber incidents, and potential cyber events. We're also working with our international partners to promote the rule of law. 
relating to cybercrime. We are a signatory to the Budapest Convention as of 2006, and we are also encouraging our colleagues to sign on to this important document as well, uh, as it provides a framework for sharing information there. F finally, we are trying to cultivate a more robust public-private dialogue for cybercrime, because as all of this, when you look to build a partnership, you have to build trust and a working relationship between government and private industry. It's not always easy to build, and we spend a great deal of time talking about the common problems that we share. And as we learn in this, when we try and build a partnership and build trust, it's important that we build relationships, that people know the other side of the issue, the other point of view, and in fact, the other person at the end of the phone. And indeed, I find it fascinating that as we talk about this cyber threat, this most online of threats that lives in a world that we can neither touch nor feel, what's most important are the human connections that we continue to forge to build the relationships that will provide the support to prevent and deter cybercrime. So thank you for giving me a few moments to talk about the Department of Justice and what we're doing in this, and I look forward to hearing not only from my colleagues, but continuing to work with them as we fight to combat this global threat. Thank you, Attorney General, for, for sharing that, uh, these insights and that perspective. Uh, Jean-Luc, um, the Attorney General already mentioned the recommendations uh, you're, you launched today, but let me, let me take a step back. Why is the World Economic Forum engaged on the topic, and, and what are you trying to achieve with these recommendations? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, probably know, the World Economic Forum is an international institution for private-public partnership. And as such, uh, it has been decided uh, 15 months ago to address a couple of uh, issues related to global crime. Global economy can mean, unfortunately, global crime as well. And the question was uh, how to focus or what to focus on. And uh, I uh, address this, uh, I ask this question uh, actually uh, uh, by our partners, uh, member of the forum, but by the law enforcement, uh, global acting or regional acting law enforcement uh, uh, as well. And all, all gave me the same answer, cybercrime is on the top of the list. Just to give you <laughs> an idea, uh, according to uh, latest uh, pictures, the amount of, uh, amount of money made by the global cybercrime uh, cyber is estimated at uh, $450 billion. So it has been decided to focus on cybercrime and in order to achieve a global uh, private-public partnership on that field, uh, we got a, a group of uh, distinguished uh, representatives from uh, uh, several uh, uh, sectors. Uh, representing the banking, representing the insurance, uh, representing uh, the credit card as well, as well as top representatives from Interpol, Europol, Eurojust, U.S. Department of Justice and uh, uh, other, in order to uh, combine the thoughts uh, in, in that field. What we did is uh, we began by assessing the threats. And it was very interesting to realize that after a couple of hours, all attendees, both representing uh, the private sector and the uh, uh, public sector, uh, achieved the same results uh, and uh, the same assessment. Global crime is indeed on the top of the list. Uh, it was difficult to uh, define. It is difficult to define the cybercrime, but uh, uh, in the end, uh, they decide, the members of the group decided that there are two main categories of cybercrime. The crimes which uh, already existed before internet uh, existed, like uh, theft, like corruption, like fraud, and uh, cyber, uh, cyber crimes which are, are uh, immediately linkage with uh, uh, internet. That means, uh, for example, uh, malwares, Trojans, uh, interruption of, of systems. So rapidly, a uh, total uh, uh, alignment of the threat assessment. Then the second question, these uh, uh, persons uh, asked wa uh, was, 
uh, what has been done so far, because the idea was really not to reinvent the, ro the wheel. The idea was to find the right niche in order to have impact, to go ahead, to find solution, practical solution. Uh, so we had a look at what has been done uh, worldwide on the regional level, on the national level, and a, a, a document has been established, a so-called reference document based on this assessment of the situation, based as well on the uh, assessment of what has been done, the next step was to assess common needs. And rapidly, rapidly, uh, it has been decided that one of the main common needs was a better sharing of information and a better implementation of existing uh, legal framework. So it has been decided uh, in the first, uh, fourth stage to, uh, 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 sorry, to uh, address the question, what are the common measures we should uh, implement in the next uh, months? And the common measures I am speaking about are now uh, uh, listed in this document, five recommendations, a uh, very simple one, but I'm convinced that if uh, all uh, uh, enterprises, all companies, all law enforcement, which already accepted to support this document, are able to implement these recommendations, we will have uh, uh, made a very good step forward and I am sure we will uh, 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 achieve a situation where the global crime, especially the cyber criminals, will in the next months and years really fear uh, the private sector as well as the law enforcement on that field. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jean-Luc. Um, Secretary General, um, my colleague mentioned uh, the importance of information sharing, so let's share. Mm -hmm. From your perspective as law enforcement, uh, what's the situation and why do you think these recommendations will help us move forward on cybercrime? Thank you very much and a very good afternoon. Um, I would like to begin also by thanking the chairman of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and Jean-Luc Weh and his team for this uh, important initiative. They have provided um, a platform for government, law enforcement, judicial institutions, and industry to discuss and generate um, these recommendations. Jean-Luc Bay has already mentioned. And in one important aspect is what uh, Madam Attorney General already mentioned, the human connection, so th that makes a difference. Sometimes it's very easy, and you have to be very pragmatic. Um, I'm, I'm also honored being here together with Madam Attorney General because she really supports Interpol, our work connecting 190 member countries all around the globe, and uh, with Eugene Kaspersky, who is part um, of the global complex um, of innovation in, in Singapore. I will come back to this point uh, a little later. Raising awareness and developing capacity of both law enforcement and industry to address the various issues surrounding cybercrime is an absolute priority for global security. This cannot be done in isolation. No country can do this in isolation. No law enforcement authority, authority can do this in isolation. And no company can protect itself in isolation. So if you want to tackle this threat successfully, we need to speak with each other. It's as simple as it is. So the recommendations uh, provide an excellent basis uh, to move forward with regards to connecting the dots and uh, to find a common strategy on how to tackle this kind of crime. We must implement it because the rising tide, known as the Internet of Things or the Internet of Everything, what I learned here is probably more precise, provides huge opportunities for criminals to attack our private computers, our smartphones, um, the critical infrastructures within our societies or, or companies, the assets of the, the companies doing their business. So huge opportunities for criminals once again. They don't have to leave their house. They can just sit uh, on the sofa. They can be connected with other criminals, sharing their, their experience in attacking our societies. They can buy the tools they need to attack just from the underground economy. So it's very, very easy, and uh, again, it's really a global threat for uh, all of us. Interpol is uniquely placed to help law enforcement in its 190 member countries fighting cybercrime through enhanced cooperation, information sharing. Um, Jean-Luc Vey mentioned the importance, and innovation, doing so on a global level, and uh, the level uh, at which cybercrime must be 
fought mainly, of course, it is the global level, and it requires a lot of cooperation. The report re provides Interpol with a concrete framework to help coordinate law enforcement, so to organize international operations, and uh, to also join up with governments, with the judiciary, with the industry, and the academia. This collaboration is necessary, for example, with information sharing, because often what is needed is to understand, to prevent, and to investigate cybercrime is in the hands and minds of industries and academia, not law enforcement. So we need the reports from uh, the industry, for instance, on attacks, from private people on attacks. And uh, if I have a look on our national crime statistics, uh, this is just, uh, let's say, the, the, the tip of the iceberg, um, we have to assume that there is a huge dark field of those cases that are not reported to law enforcement yet, and we need this information to protect uh, our societies. So we can't fight the phenomena successfully if we don't talk with each other once again. The Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore was created as a global platform to facilitate such exchanges between sectors and once again on a global uh, scale. We have specialists from both cyber security firms and from the academia working, if you may, may use that, that language, desk by desk, sitting together uh, every day per week, sharing the global threat and talking about initiatives to counter uh, the threat. They provide expertise across a wide range of uh, areas, including intelligence and malware analysis, for instance, mobile forensics, as well as researching cyber threats and attack attribution. Additional specialists from the banking sector and from the telecommunications sectors will also soon be joining the team in Singapore at IGCI. So with this type of collaboration, we are also working to develop new tools and building up law enforcement capacities and equipment worldwide. So in most of our member countries, um, it's still a challenge that the police gets the capabilities they need to successfully tackle this kind of crime, to deal with digital for, um, evidence. So what is needed on a global scale is a kind of, let's say, we, we spoke about an industry 4.0. What we now need in law enforcement is the criminalistics 4.0 and the specific uh, uh, tools and also the training that is required that police officers all around the globe can use that can be connected with each other to share their experience. So we are working hard on doing that, and um, I'm very happy to say that many governments support uh, this important work of Interpol, and amongst them the U.S. government is, is really, really very supportive in, in, in getting forward, moving forward in getting uh, the right equipment and the right training to the, front, to the frontline police officers in our 190 member uh, countries. So definitely um, the platform the World Economic Forum has been providing is extremely uh, important for Interpol to develop our role in connecting the 190 member countries' police services. And we very much hope that we can uh, immediately start with implementing all the recommendations and using our platform in Singapore as a major hub connecting law enforcement and industry and academia to make the world a safer place with regards to the cyber crime threat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank you very much. Um, Eugene, let's do a little exercise. Uh, let's imagine you have a crystal ball and you can look into that crystal ball and see what the cyber risks that are coming that we might not even know about yet, that the fourth industrial revolution is bringing to us. What would these uh, threats be? Uh, well, actually, you don't really need to look at a crystal ball and uh, there are better sources of these predictions uh, than Hollywood. And actually, they explained a lot what can happen in their uh, world, uh, which is uh, now transforming to the 4.0. Uh, and what's going on right now, uh, it's, really, it's really scary. Uh, in the past, the uh, cybercrime, well, that was little problem. This wasn't uh, some noise from there. Uh, with not so much of impact on the global and national economies uh, and the security. Uh, nowadays, the, uh, it's the picture is absolutely different. Uh, there are more and more very professional cyber criminal gangs uh, which innovate. Uh, they also they are transforming to the new age and uh, they use the new uh, methods of the attacks, new technologies. And in many cases, it's very, very hard to guarantee high level of protection for the enterprise networks, for the bank networks, for the states. 
uh, organizations, uh, all very, very difficult to recognize that the system is infected because they behave in a very, very hidden way. So their cybercrime is getting more and more and more professional. And uh, they are, uh, you call it Internet of uh, Things, I call it Internet of Threats because they are everywhere. Uh, at the same time, the professional cybercrime, uh, in some cases, they provide services. Uh, they trade these technologies. They cooperate. And we see many very international gangs uh, which use the same technologies which are provided by some remote internet criminals. Uh, we call it crime as a service. Uh, so that's the first. Uh, cybercrime is getting more and more professional. Second, the traditional crime which was existed before internet uh, it's a recogni they recognize the power of cyber. So they do the same things uh, like in the past, uh, but now they do it by attacking production lines, uh, attacking the transportation systems. Uh, and a very good example of that is attack on Antwerp seaport. When uh, Latin American drug cartels infected the automatic containers unloading system, and they were unloading containers with cocaine to the area they have access to. Uh, it was a report from uh, Europol last year. Uh, so the traditional crime recognized power of cyber. They employ cyber criminals. Uh, it means that the cyber crime and traditional crime, they are getting more and more closer to each other. And I'm afraid in the future we will see the gangs which have both cyber and traditional criminals working very close to each other. Uh, I'm not sure who will manage who is going to manage cybercrime to manage the traditional crime or traditional crime managing the cybercrime. Uh, maybe they will be not possible to recognize who they are. They are criminals. And the cyber will be like a part of any high profile crime in, in the worldwide. And uh, the third, which I'm really afraid of, uh, cybercrime is there, getting more professional. The traditional crime joined cyberspace. What's next? Terrorism. I'm afraid that the next uh, actor in this uh, place in the cyber world will be the terrorist attacks on the critical infrastructure, uh, which is physical infrastructure, uh, the critical data like financial services and telecommunications. Uh, that's why this world is getting more and more dangerous, uh, so environment more aggressive and uh, this is a very high demand on the uh, information sharing, on the private public uh, cooperation and well pu public public cooperation in international cooperation to fight with the international cyber crime uh, to stop them before they are recruited by terrorists uh, so they have a lot of work to do and I'm really happy that and really well that's the reason I'm here one of the reasons I'm here in Davos uh, to be in touch with these new initiatives, uh, uh, to share my opinion on what's going on, and I see that it's going in the right way. Uh, I'm really proud of that because I'm talking about the information sharing and the uh, cooperation between public and private sectors and international cooperation for about a decade. <laughs> so <laughs> I recognize that, that the crime in the cyberspace, uh, it will become a very serious, a critical problem many years ago and was talking about that and now I'm really proud that it's my, my dreams, uh, they're coming true. Thank you, thank you very much for that. And Th actually, thank you very much. Uh, uh, from me, you'll have 100% uh, support and data which you need and will assist all this initiative which is fighting, with the, fighting the bad guys to uh, save the world, which is not cyber world. It's, it's, cyber is physical. It's everywhere around us. Even the cameras which are recording us, they are yes. cyber. Speaking of the cameras and the journalists in the room, thank you very much. I know we have five minutes left, so um, we will open the floor for questions. If you could uh, keep it to a really a one short question, state your name and organization for the sake of our online audience. Let's start with David over there and then move to the gentleman here in the, in the front row. Let's take uh, two questions. Thank you. Uh, David Sirota with International Business Times. This is for the Attorney General. Uh, does fighting international cyber crime require backdoor access to encrypted network like WhatsApp or Apple iMessage? Silicon Valley says no. Some former government officials like the former NSA director say that kind of unfettered surveillance might do more harm than good. What do you say? Yes, Thank sir. you very much. Let's, let's take the second question first, please. So. Attorney General, allow me uh, another question uh, concerning another issue, FIFA. 
He once promised to clean up FIFA. Just wanted to find out where we stand in that mission nowadays. And how do you assess the new FIFA reform program that has been presented? Well, it's a bit of an off-topic off question. You can think about FIFA what you want, but they're probably not cyber criminals. So uh, maybe we can turn to, to David's uh, question there. Uh, with respect to your question on encryption, encryption is, is obviously a valuable tool both to government and private industry. And uh, we in the U.S. government are not asking for a backdoor. We are asking to work with Silicon Valley and the tech industry to make sure that as we preserve encryption, we also preserve what we currently have, which is the ability for companies to respond to law enforcement warrants, court-ordered, court-authorized requests for information. Um, our view is that there's so many different platforms out there, and technology is changing so rapidly that with the skills that we have, we think that with continued discussions, we can, in fact, strike that balance between privacy and security. Thank you. Uh, let's take the lady in the front here. Did you want me to? Well, with respect to FIFA, what I can say is that that investigation is ongoing. As you know, uh, we began uh, our, our enforcement efforts this past May. We continued this past December with additional arrests. The investigation is ongoing. Uh, I actually have been in Zurich earlier this week meeting with uh, Swiss Attorney General Michael Lauber, uh, whom I'd like to thank for his cooperation and assistance. We have separate investigations, but we work very, very well together. We follow the evidence where it leads, and, and I'm not able to go into specifics right now, but I can tell you that the investigation is ongoing. We uh, look forward to seeing the results of the new election and hope that the reform efforts do continue and that they are genuine. Please. I would also uh, have a question concerning uh, the Swiss attorney, attorney General. He is urging YouTube and other internet companies to cooperate more closely when it comes to taking uh, hate speech or even terrorist content from the internet. Um, is there any way uh, the U.S. authorities could help the Swiss authorities? Well, with respect to the efforts by a number of entities to work again with private industry to deal with terrorist propaganda, most of these companies have specific terms of use. And when matters are brought to their attention, they are generally cooperative in removing uh, those matters. In the U.S., because we do have a very strong freedom of speech um, m expression uh, from our First Amendment on, they're always trying to find a balance similar to that in the encryption issue between that freedom and also not being a platform for terror. And so what we try and do with all of our law enforcement counterparts is provide them the information they need to, to focus their requests so that the companies can be as responsive as possible. Thank you very much. The, the lady right in the, at the first seat, and after that, the lady with the red dress in the middle, please. Mina al from al Al-Sat newspaper, the Middle East. Um, the global enhancement of the terrorist uh, group Daesh has been, uh, has been seen, um, has been achieved through the internet. Um, what needs to be done in the year ahead to, to prevent this from occurring, from them recruiting members online? And can we get the second question right away? Right there in the middle? Thank you. Laura Riley from Business Insider. Um, a nuanced question, perhaps, but um, you were talking earlier about the kind of definition of cybercrime. Um, I wondered whether um, ad fraud um, comes into that definition. Um, it's been known, and people talk about the fact that, or uh, the, the, the belief that it funds kind of criminal gangs, criminal activity, possibly terrorist activity. So I just wondered whether that was something that um, this will be um, focusing on, this cooperation. Thanks. Thank you. Who wants to take on that question? You? Um, just for, for my side, a remark on, on the encryption issue. Um, definitely, let's say that the police has a problem with these encryption part and, and the topic of anon anonymization. Uh, at the end, of course, it's a decision that has to be made by, by politicians, not, not by law enforcement, but at least we have to indicate that we have a problem because what, what has been possible in most of our, for instance, mem Interpol member countries to, to survey communication of suspects of serious crime, terrorists, of course, is now getting a, a problem because we are more and more getting dark because of, of the encryption and anonymization topic. So it's something that law enforcement has to address, but once again, we have to respect that a, that a decision needs to be taken on a political level and this needs to be discussed, but, but just we have to address the, the, the issue. Thank you very much. 
Well, with respect to the question of how does one prevent ISIL from recruiting online, it's, it's very difficult to prevent uh, any organization from using the internet to spread its message. And in fact, of course, it, the internet can be used for positive things as well. One of the things I think that there's great attention being paid to both in the U.S. and with our European counterparts is finding ways to counter the message that ISIL is sending uh, out and uh, searching for ways to empower local communities, communities where uh, troubled youth have been drawn from uh, and, and joined ISIL um, to find ways for them to also communicate uh, content that, that, that essentially tries to break that chain. Um, and as we're, we're looking at partnering with private industry in that regard as well, uh, I know that here in Europe there are a number of initiatives that are going on to counter those messages both in Europe and in Great Britain. Um, certainly, again, it, it ties back into the ways in which certain types of content, content can be removed from the Internet, certain types cannot be removed from the Internet. And so as we look at the greater problem that is disaffected people being drawn into an incredibly violent subculture, uh, that today is ISIL and tomorrow may be something else. I think all of us need to focus uh, our efforts on the law enforcement side, but also finding a way to break that connection and counter the message. Thank you very much. Uh, we might have time for one last question, if you can get the uh, microphone here. Hi, I'm Jamie Keaton from Associated Press. This one's for Mr. Stock and Mr. Kaspersky. Um, we're picking up on the question about ISIL, um, the, some of the attacks have been commanded from places like Raqqa and Mosul. Um, and I'm just wondering, from a technical standpoint, and both from the law enforcement tools that you mentioned, uh, Mr. Stock, what is out there in terms of tools that you need to have that you don't have right now? And from a technical standpoint, um, what can be done to impede these types of, uh, of acts? And, and, and if you could just elaborate on what specific the threat terrorism. Uh, you're speaking about the technical tools, yeah. Uh, well, actually, this I'm talking only about the uh, malware-based cyber crime. So I'm not touching the uh, illegal content or tracking the counterfeit stuff. Uh, so uh, to investigate the crime based on the malware, malicious attacks, uh, well, actually, we have all the tools in our hands, technical tools. Uh, and uh, I think that I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we can investigate any criminal case which is made with uh, this kind of technologies. Uh, we have experts, we have the knowledge, we have, uh, well, we had a successful story, stories, and uh, the major problem is, not at the technical side, uh, the problem is that the uh, local national police departments, they behave only within the national borders. Uh, and of course there is a cooperation, there is a Interpol, there is a Europol, but in some cases there's still lack of the international cooperation between these departments. And sometimes uh, I'm a private company, I'm in between, so I connect the police departments from nation A to nation B, but I'm saying, hey, you're both from the West. Why are you not talking to each other? It's too bureaucratic, Eugene, you're a much, much faster link. Uh, so I think that technically speaking, we can investigate any, almost every case, criminal case, because criminals, they behave, uh, say, on a daily basis. So we can clo come closer and closer and closer to sur sur surround them and the proof that they are responsible for the attacks in most of cases. Thank you very much. Just <coughs> very briefly from, from our side, two examples. Um, the, the first example, investigating digital evidence. So, so all, all kinds of digital evidence uh, that is collected um, needs to be explored in terms of is there any, anything, any information uh, law enforcement might need to protect uh, societies from terrorist attacks, for instance. We need to have the technology uh, in all our member countries to investigate this evidence. Second point, uh, the big data problem. Uh, when I was a young police officer, of course, and we did a, a search somewhere, we collected a lot of paperwork, and then we went through the paperwork. Today, we are collecting terabyte and even more of data uh, as evidence, and going through this evidence is a challenge both for law enforcement and the judiciary to collect the, the necessary evidence, and also through the co cooperation with the private sector, we hope to get the, the, the tools we need uh, to collect this kind of evidence. Thank you very much. And I think uh, we're, uh, we have to close the press conference at this point. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you to all my panelists here today. Thank you.